Drills are used in a machine shop to drill holes in parts, such as a metal plate. They fall into four different systems. The first system is the fractional system, which is probably the most common. The drill bit sizes, or the diameter of the drill bit, range from 1 64th of an inch all the way up to 4 inches, although the 4 inch size would be uncommon. It is very large. Metric drills typically range from 0 0.05 millimeters up to 38 millimeters, although there are larger sizes available. Sometimes we need a drill in between sizes, such as in between the fractional sizes or in between the metric sizes. This is where numbered and lettered drills come in. Numbered drills are for smaller diameter holes and they work backwards. A number 107 drill is actually just under two thousandths of an inch in diameter, whereas a number 1 drill is actually 0.228 inches in diameter or slightly smaller than a quarter inch. After that we go to letter drills and this is the fourth system of drill bits that we use and they work from A being small to Z being larger. A size drill is 0.234 inches again just slightly smaller than a quarter inch and they go up to Z which is 0.413 inches which is just slightly smaller than 7 sixteenths of an inch. Drill bits up to half inch in diameter will typically have a straight shank which is held in a drill chuck. Drill bits over half inch in diameter will typically have a tapered shank. Very common tapered shank is the Morse taper, M-O-R-S-E, and it is approximately 5 eighths of an inch taper per foot and it is meant to go directly into the spindle of the drill press. All drill bits have three main parts. The very end of the drill bit is called the point. Then there is the body of the drill bit which runs from the point down. And last but not least the shank of the drill which is the bottom part of the drill. Drill bits will commonly have the size of the drill on the shank. In this case this one's from the fractional series drill. Again, like discussed, drill bits typically over half inch in diameter will have a tapered shank and this is the case here. This is actually that Morse taper and this is the tapered shank down here that goes into the spindle of the drill press, not in the drill chuck. The diameter of this is dependent on the size of the Morse taper, number one being a small Morse taper, three, four, and five being larger Morse tapers. And what's happening is the diameter of this taper is changing. Again, the taper will be approximately five eighths of an inch taper per foot. The other end of the tapered shank will have a flat on it and this is the tang of the drill. This is only found on the tapered shank drills. It is not found on the straight shank drills or the drills commonly under half inch in diameter. This shank on the end of it actually has a taper, a taper on the end of it which is just over eight degrees and its whole purpose is so we can put a drift, a tapered drift on the end of this and when we hit it with a hammer it'll pop it out of the spindle. The body of the drill found between the point and the shank actually has several things going on. There are two grooves that run around the drill and these are called the flutes. These serve a couple of purposes. One, they allow cutting fluid or an oil to get to the tip of the drill as it's drilling. The second purpose is it allows an evacuation route for the chips that are being created at the point of the drill. On smaller drills, this flute is actually fairly small and will need to be removed from the hole on a regular basis to clean the chips. At the bottom of the flute is called the web, where the, the two flutes meet is called the web, and it is fairly thin at the tip and it gets thicker as we move down towards the shank of the drill, like a Christmas tree. If we are to draw a line up the center of the drill, and we draw a line off of the edge of the flute. This is called the helix angle of the drill. 
And it is a right-handed helix in most cases. In other words, if I was to hold the shank in my hand, this groove is falling towards my right hand as it twists around the drill. This is very common because as drills go in a clockwise direction, we want this drill bit to screw itself into the hole. Now, some drills will actually have quite a bit larger helix angle here to remove chips, such as a drill drilling deep in aluminum. It would be a high helix angle drill. If you notice here, you will see a very small raised section on the outside of the drill. This is called the margin of the drill. It is where the drill gets its diameter from, and it is just a small little section that is in front of the land. This is the land in, in behind the margin of the drill. And the reason that we had the margin is raised is so the drill doesn't jam in the hole as it's cutting. The point of the drill is where the cutting takes place. General purpose drill bits have an included angle of 118 degrees. And this is common of most drill bits, 118 degrees. If we are drilling in soft material, what we do is we make that cutting edge a lot longer. And this one has an included angle of 60 to 90 degrees. Last but not least, if we are drilling hard material, we flatten the end of the drill out. So this has an included angle of 135 degrees to 150 degrees. Again, the general purpose drill bit, or the most common drill bit, has an included angle of 118 degrees. Having a closer look at the point of the drill, we actually have these two edges here, which are called the cutting lips of the drill. As a drill spins in the clockwise direction, both of these edges would dig in to the metal, removing some of the metal. In the middle of the cutting lips, this area right here is called the chisel edge. And the chisel edge of the drill is actually the bottom of the flutes, where they meet. And this area, if I was to follow it from the point of the drill down to the shank, is called the web of the drill. Again, it is fairly thin at the point and gets thicker as I work towards the shank. Sometimes, as the drill gets shorter, this will actually need to be relieved. So you'll have to go over to the grinder and you'll actually have to grind some of the web back. Out here on the end of the cutting lip, on both sides, is the margin of the drill. And that's this area right here that is actually raised. When you measure a drill bit, this is where it should be measured, is right where the point meets the margin of the drill. In behind the margin of the drill, this is called the land of the drill, and you can see it quite clearly on the side here. Behind the cutting lips on the top of the drill is called the heel of the drill, and that's these areas in here. And if you have a look at the side of it, this is actually the heel of the drill in this area here. If I was to draw a line straight off the top of the drill and then follow the angle on the hex of the drill, this angle here should be between 8 and 12 degrees. If it is too much, what happens is it ends up breaking the cutting edge down. If it is smaller than 8 to 12 degrees, the drill ends up rubbing on the heel and it won't allow it to feed into the part being drilled. These are the parts of a drill bit.